So hello everyone. Um, yeah, I think everybody is already a little bit tired from the long day, so I will not make it too long. This one, make it a little bit lighthearted. Uh, so some of the slides of Kurt were a little bit depressing. So let's cheer a little bit now. Okay, let's first do a poll because I really want to know. I'm thinking somebody was maybe not exactly uh, honest during the easy build survey. So with that, if you think the right logo is better than the left logo, put on your right hand. If you think the left logo is better, put on your left hand. <laughs> Uh, do we have that on camera? <laughs> so, now let's get on to business. Um, so, the motivation of this talk was um, as Kenneth already explained during the uh, his talk yesterday, uh, we cannot keep up with the number of uh, pull requests. So as you can see, um, it's going up here. We are now at about 800 pull requests that are currently open, and this is way too much. And although the number of uh, easy build maintainers has gone up a lot, um, we are still not keeping up. And um, we need to do something about that, I think. And one of the things that can be done is uh, educating the contributors and uh, let them know how they can help us so the pull requests can be merged faster. So we are, of course, very happy with all the extra new contributors, but that also gives much more work. And if you have any ideas how we can improve the process to make it, to make it faster, then, of course, those suggestions are very welcome. OK. So, who am I? I'm Sam. I, you can find me at Smores. That's my uh, tag on GitHub and Slack. I'm, I'm also an easy build maintainer. Uh, I work at the HPC facility of the VUB together with Alex. Alex is good. I'll try to talk a little bit louder. So, I'm working at the HPC facility. Uh, in Brussels at the VUB, together with Alex and Wart. Alex and Wart are also easy build maintainers, so maybe you already know them. And there on the right is the campus, the VUB campus, so it's a very nice place to study. So, why should you contribute back? Well, probably all of you already know why you should contribute back, but uh, let's reiterate so one of the nice things is that uh, easy build contains lots and lots of software titles and it's going up as Kenneth showed and it's even increasing a little bit uh, the last uh, few months and you will become part of the open science movement so that's really nice because I mean everybody's talking about open science and this is the way you can contribute to that make science reproducible reproducible um, so yeah and of course uh, the community is very welcoming you can meet many HPC experts in the field from all over the world um, and you will get feedback from from those experts when you make a pull request and you can make uh, make it even better and so you can support your users even better. Um, so, reporting issues on GitHub. Uh, what are the things that you should do when you report an issue? Uh, the first thing is write a good issue title, of course. Uh, so if you already write exactly what is going wrong, uh, that will help us a lot, so we don't have to open the issue and, and see what's the problem. 
uh, it's always a good idea to include all the relevant info, so uh, uh, the operating system that you use when you un encounter this issue, um, easy build version that you used, configuration, and so on. And then it's also good to uh, include the steps so we can reproduce the issue that you encountered and use code blocks for formatting. This is something that users often forget, but it's much more readable if you use the code blocks. Um, many of you already know that, of course. And this is also something, an idea for the future, so we should probably create an issue template uh, so it's easier for users to include all that information when they report an issue. Okay. Contributing easy config files. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do to make our life easier in that way. One of the things you should do is use a recent toolchain generation. If you submit a PR for a very old tool chain, you can always do that, and they're, you know, they're welcome to do that, but we have a limit. But even then, um, it's always better to use the most recent one because it's more useful for the entire community. So there will be more chance um, that your contribution will be looked at and be merged in the report. Um, we have a policy, and that says that there's a single dependency variant per generation. And this is a quite annoying rule, but it's also a very handy rule. And it's annoying because, yeah, sometimes you want to have multiple versions, but if you use these multiple versions, then you will might end up in the dependency hell. So that's why we have always that rule. There are some exceptions. Um, but try to stick to that rule as much as possible. If you don't stick to it, then the GitHub checks will warn you, and then you will see that, okay, this is not correct. Uh, always add the sanity check command if it's possible. So if, you, if you're uh, building a software that contains an executable, then try to include the sanity check command for that executable. So that's a, a minimal uh, test for software that it works. Um, also, um, when you have a PR that depends on another PR, it's always good to include that at the top of the PR. So. Uh, maintainers can see, okay, this one depends on the other one, so I have to look first at the other one before this one can be merged. Project, right? And then, if possible, uh, try to upload a test report for this uh, PR. If you do that, then we know, okay, um, this is a config or this PR. It's known to work at least in some cases. And that will help us um, <clears throat> get it merged faster. Um, and then, of course, uh, try to use the GitHub integration features as much as possible. This is something for you that will help you. Um, and then it will also be easier and more fun to contribute, right? Also, if you want to. Um, make a PR for something that is not quite ready yet, you can also do that. But then, and then you can already test it, see if it passes the checks. And then you can convert your PR to a draft PR. So on GitHub, I can, for, maybe can show this. So for example, this PR from Niket, it's already it's already a draft one, but I can uh, look at another one. For instance, this one here at the right, you can say okay, convert to draft to draft. 
and then we know, okay, we don't have to look at this one because it's not ready yet. So it's easier for us. Mm, sorry. <laughs> so, um, how do maintainers review the tests? Well, one of the things we do is with EB Review PR, compare it with other uh, easy configs with other versions. And with, this, with that tool, it's very easy for us to, um, to spot differences between versions. Also, we make test reports with the command that is shown there. And then also we use the bots. So there are currently two bots is, uh, and that we can uh, launch for running test reports. Um, these are available for maintainers, but also can be available for contributors, for regular contributors. If you know, okay, this one is a trusted contributor, and if you ask that, then we can also give you access to that one. So that, that's a, the, the biggest blocker for uh, the PR to be merged is that it's not yet fully tested. So usually we, we require that it's at least tested with the two bots uh, that are available. Okay, let's try a little demo. I'm uh, counting here on some of the reviewers. <laughs> some of the maintainers uh, that are in the room. So. Uh, <laughs> you should be trying one, otherwise it's gonna be boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I have here. An I <laughs> so the question was to, take PyTorch 2.0, but... Um, <laughs> that's going to take a little bit too long. So what we have here... Uh, can I have silence in the room, please? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so this is an example that builds the Isabel tutorial. Uh, you can build it if you want, um, and it's just a small example. So we, we're not going to include it into EasyBuild, but just to show how is the workflow. So this one looks very nice. It, it seems to have everything that we need, um, but I'm going to break it a little bit. So I will delete the checksum and see what happens. Okay, oh, this is annoying. I'm going to move it. So one of the things we can do is check if it's uh, ready to go, and that's with the EB check contribute. Oh. Oh, I hate glasses. Okay. So it shows me that it passes the first test, and that is the the fat eight test. So it does some on file checking and then the first the second test is failed so because there is no check how can we inject the checksum that's also easy db sample and then okay and now it, it has Create, created a backup of the original file, and we can we can check. 
difference. And yes, indeed, it has inserted the checksum for us. So it's all automatic. Okay, now we want to upload it to GitHub, make a PR. And for that, we need to have GitHub integration into EasyBuild. So we'll first check how can it how can I remove this line? Thank you. CD check it up. So my GitHub user is okay. I'm online. I have my GitHub token installed. I can use Git commands. I have the Git Python module installed. I have push access to the repo. I can create gists. And I also have a location for the working gears for this. So all checks are passed, that's good. So I can now um, push my contribution. Uh, one uh, issue that you may have if you have if you are running easybuild 4.7.1 there is one bug that will show you that the gists are not working so but there is a there's already a fix in develop for that so don't worry if that's not working okay so ed dash new PR. okay that's not going to work if I don't specify my EasyBuild file. Okay. So now we should be able to see the pull request. Here it is. And we see that it's immediately running all the tests, all the checks. And if I want to have some comment for the maintainers, then I could put it here. And I already got a comment from an annoying maintainer. Okay. Yes, I like it. Doesn't work anyway. Okay, let's make the let's make the change. Sorry? <laughs> like this? <laughs> so the reason why we are quite strict about the formatting is that it's easier for us to check the differences. I will show you later. For instance, I can now, yeah, this is not a good example, but um, if we go to the one I Maybe I should first um, update update this one again. Um, what was the date? So update the PR and then comment. Sorry. Update the PR and the PR number and then you should check. Right. Yeah, I have a wrapper for that. That's why I don't remember it. 
Uh, yeah. And then the comments. What's that? Can you tell me? Yeah, of course I cannot read it. You also need to message. That's the one. Um, So well, let it's going. Okay. So what the maintainers do to check, for example, this one, it's for our studio, is to run this command, review PR. Is this one from Miket? And as you can see, it compares with four different other versions of our studio. And then you can easily see what are the differences. So if it's if every easy config is formatted in the same way, then it's much easier for us. Of course, we can limit this search and say, I want to only compare with, with this one, for example. And I can review PR filter if I did. And then it should show me only one. So here you see that there's one difference with one other easy config. And you can run that also for yourself. And you, I could also run that for my easy config. Or I can do it also with the preview. And then it's just local. PR. And then the example. But of course, there is no other easy config found, so it cannot compare anything. Okay. That was a demo. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of course, of course. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, what is Yeah. Okay, but you <laughs> you get the idea. Contributing easy, contributing easy blocks. Um, for that, um, one thing that is important is that we maintain backward compatibility. Uh, so you can uh, put your code into this version um, condition with, with the example code that is shown there. So it only affects the new versions and not the old ones. You can also open PRs also with a new PR option for easy blocks. And then, um, so Kenneth told me uh, this morning that actually the, the PR target repo option is not necessary. It will automatically detect that it's for an easy block. Uh, yeah. Oh.
Yeah, it's just the, the stake the FICO file is less of a tax service than it's a It thinks it's an easy block, it's going to send it to you. But you can override it. So if you, if you know what it is, it's easy. So. so, yeah, if you want to be sure, then include to the option, and then there should be no problem. Um, and you should also try, if you can, upload the test report also for the easy block. And you can do that like that. So you you add the option include easy blocks from PR and then the easy block PR and then also the easy config. And then it will send the test report to the easy block PR. And then we can see if it works or not. Okay. And also in the bot, you can also do the same with the EBRs option. So keep in mind that we don't control all easy config files. And for example, uh, what Kurt was saying, we don't know what other users might be doing. They have may have other repos, and we don't want to break them. So this is how an easy block test report can look like. This is for TensorFlow. Of course, TensorFlow, we want to test it uh, very rigorously for all the previous versions as well. Make sure that all changes made to the easy block are still uh, valid for the old versions. And then contributing to the easy build framework. Um, this is something that uh, Alex will talk about tomorrow in his talk. Um, but here are just a few points that you should uh, take care of and also maintain backwards compati compatibility, of course. Um, but also make sure that all the changes are covered by the test suite. I know um, the test suite is not always easy to contribute to that. So if you need help with that, uh, make sure to ask, for example, in the Slack channel, and uh, we'll be, we will certainly help you, or at least cannot, if if nobody else can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, the hound. Yeah, so what uh, Bart is saying that it's quite challenging to make a framework PR without getting errors by the hound. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a style checker uh, and it's quite strict indeed. Yeah. Okay. So if you haven't noticed, I'm including some ideas for new labels. <laughs> uh, one thing that users can do to be able to or to be able to contribute more is sorry, is by use of hooks. Uh, this was already mentioned. Uh, several times during the meeting. Um, but it's, it's a really handy feature. For example, uh, suppose that you have a PyTorch version installed and it's different from the one in the EasyBuild repo because of the single version dependency requirement. So suppose that we have PyTorch 1.12.0 in the EasyBuild repo, but you really need 1.12.1 for a specific uh, use case in your cluster because it contains an important bug fix or something, then this is this can be easily uh, handled in the hook, for example, like this. And then you, you don't have to make any changes to the easy config file. And you can still contribute everything as if it was 1.12.0, but actually it's using 1.12.1. Uh, if you want to have more examples for uh, hooks, then please take a look at the example given by Alex from last year, and there is a link there. 
and there's also the link to the books in the documentation. Yes, in the framework directory, there's also more examples. One is from Alka. And then this is my last slide. So um, we're trying to make the documentation much better. And we hope that many people will contribute also to the documentation. Writing documentation is very different from um, writing easy configs. Uh, you need different skills. And if you have good writing skills, then please um, take up the challenge and try to help uh, improve the documentation. And this should be a lot easier now, thanks to the migration to MKDocs. So what you can help us is finding gaps, missing info, or info that is outdated. And yeah, with every, so I forgot to tell that, but uh, in, when you make a change in the framework, then we are going to require that you also reflect all the changes in the documentation as well. So I will give you a small demo for this one as well, but it's very small. So um, yeah, let's. So if you go to the website, Easy Build Docs, where is it? So this is the website for the documentation. So it's also a GitHub repo. You just clone it here. I already did that. And then you just install all the Python packages with pip and using the requirements file. And I did that in a virtual environment, so I will have to Activate it, and now you're now you're done. Now you can start uh, rendering the documentation locally. MKDocs serve shows a bunch of warnings. I don't know if they are important. Okay, so the, the web page is served now. I can just open the link. And here it is, right? And the nice thing about it is, is that it's uh, like reactive. So if you make changes, it's automatically updated. So let's make a quick change to the documentation. <laughs> Sorry? It's not there. <laughs> triple dash? Maybe if I move it here. Make it a bit bigger. Voila. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was it. If you have any questions, or if you want to discuss, uh, now is the time.
So the the comment from Alexander is that in, in Ulic they I'm not sure how you're forcing people to do that to use pre commit hooks because I think pre commit hooks are always local. Yeah, you have to I configure. <laughs> okay, so you're forcing your colleagues to actually use yeah. that. Yeah, that's something we could, let's say, encourage. I wouldn't want to force it. Um, now, well, one thing that's that's important to uh, to realize: the whole reason we have the GitHub integration, things like new PR and things like this, is because we had contributors who were not familiar with Git at all, right? And and they actually they they were almost throwing easy configs at us, mailing them to us, and say. I want to get this in, and we wanted to enable them to, to still contribute back. If we're then going to force people to install pre commit hooks, they will get lost again and we will lose them. So I'm not sure that, that's a good idea. So what I mean yeah. is, uh, you could do it as a GitHub app. I mean, on the GitHub side, not on the, on the GitHub. Well, but that's, that's happening. So when, whenever you open a pull request, the CI triggers, and that's doing all those checks as well. So it, it, it's just going to give you a red X. If you're not, if you don't have the code style or the the things fixed already, yeah, well, I mean, it's correct, it's automatic. auto automatically correct yeah. it. Okay, yeah. that's that's an option. I think Spac is doing that for some things. For code style issues, they are they have their bot that basically is changing code um, behind your back again to make to make sure it's Pep8 compliant. For example, we could do that. Yeah. 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 Who does? Check config. Oh, there, well, yeah, we have an option in Easy Build itself that that does it actually change the file? No, no, it just it just flags it as being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But something that there's tools like this that auto auto fix. There's Black, for example, which yeah. reformats our code. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are tools like this that that could be interesting. Too. But that's often not the. I mean, it it could save you a back and forth. The, the, what we also some do, which is not standard in, in GitHub, is when the CI fails, our bot will pick up on it and give you a comment and says, hey, CI failed, you should look into this. Because when CI fails, you don't get notifications in GitHub at all. You don't get an email, you don't get a message. That's why our bot starts adding comments and says, hey, you look at this. So we're basically pushing it back to the developer and hoping that they will get around and actually fix it. Yeah, so. <laughs> Question from Slack. Oh, it's a good one. What was meant by upload test report? Um, yeah, that's the upload test report for issues. It's for, it's for pull requests. Is it useful to submit PRs with newer versions? Well, okay. Let's do the upload test report first. You didn't show that. Maybe you can show it for the EB tutorial. Um, but yeah. you don't have the tool chain on your laptop. No. Well, you, you could try it and let it fail. Yeah. Right. But I'm not sure it will run anyway. It won't get very far if you don't have a tool chain. Yeah, so the upload test report is a way for us to very easily maybe do from PR. Oh. 17799. Yeah, just yeah, like this. It's going to fail because it doesn't have the tool chain, you don't have robot, but it won't, it won't get very far. Um, but what this is doing is this is trying to do the build locally. Yeah, you, now you can show the pull request. It's trying to do the build locally, um, and then basically pushing the result of doing that. It's going to be lower. So Bart made the test report by the Google bot. Yeah. Yeah, and that last comment. That one the... was successful, and mine was uh, not successful because I don't have the tool chain installed. So. So that's the that's the uploading of a of a test report. Um, there was another question: Is it useful to submit PRs with newer versions of software, but built with older tool chain? I'll leave that one to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's useful as long as the tool chain is not too old. Yeah, but you're welcome to to yeah to contribute those. But they're less useful than the ones that with the with the latest tool chain. 
I sometimes have that problem that the doctor is no, no longer maintained, but they see the jumping up in front of me quite heavily. Um, I think they are doing it. And they said, oh yeah, I'll do it. I sometimes have that problem that um, the software is no longer maintained properly in GitHub, so it's say four years old. I try one of the latest uh, tool chains and it is failing because it has old style crappy, pardon my French, um, coding in it, but the user is jumping up and down. At, I'm not demonstrating that now in front of me and it's telling me I really need it for my thesis and I need it by yesterday and all of that. So then I'm going back and say, okay, I can compile it with GCC sake of argument nine. But then the question is, is it useful to the community? And we can say, okay, I solved that problem. So anybody who is currently listening, don't have users jumping in front of them, maybe line managers as well. Um, so, what I'm doing then is I'm opening a pull request and leave it up to the maintainers. At least if somebody has it, the same problem, they can fall back to my pull request. Is that something which is useful? I think it's still useful, especially if the software is new, then, then yeah, it's a valuable contribution because yeah, it's a new software that we support from now on. And even if it's not perfect, even it's, if it's with an older tool chain, we can still update it later, and it will save us time. So. so you can you can have multiple versions per toolchain, but only one of those versions can be a dependency of others in the same toolchain. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, for Python, we're quite strict because a lot of software depends on Python. So, yeah, if we would allow multiple versions of Python, then it would become a really a hell, I think, yeah. Yeah, the reason we have that policy is so whenever we add something in that we call this generation of easy config, so that's using a particular tool chain, we want to make sure it's as compatible as possible with everything that's using that same tool chain. And as soon as you start using definitely Python, a different Python version, you're basically forking off into a different world of its own where everything needs to be using that Python program. So that, that's something we learned the hard way. If we don't have a policy like this, it gets very messy very fast. Uh, we, I think for Python, we've always somewhat implicitly done it, um, with the exception that a while ago we had a Python 2 and a Python 3. So that was already a fork in the same generation. But where we really started hitting problems was with Boost. Um, so when Boost was used as a dependency, we had two versions of Boost um, and two packages with two versions of Boost that somehow then became a common dependency for something else. Then it got really hairy and, and it was very difficult to, to get out of. And this policy allows us to avoid that problem as much as possible. And where we make exceptions is when there's really a, a technical reason why it doesn't work with a newer or an older version of the dependency, then we say, okay, this is an exception, and the implication is that it's not going to be compatible with other stuff in that generation, but fine, that's the, the best we can do. Yeah, well, for build dependencies, it, the, the, the bottlenecks remain. You don't have to make exceptions at all, so it's only for runtime, runtime stuff. So we, we have cases where we have multiple CMake versions in the same generation, but that's okay, you can never get a conflict from that when actually using the, the modules once they're installed. There was a, a follow-up question as well. Um, what about software with extra options? Uh, like if there's an extra dependency that you add, which is only needed for some use cases of the software. Mm. 
Well, it's actually not a problem to add an extra dependency, even if you don't need it. But if you would need something that is incompatible with other dependencies, for example, then you can also do that, but then you will have to add a version suffix. So it's clear it's another version of that uh, of the variant. Yeah. Another variant, yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you see any other questions then? I don't see any in Zoom or Slack. Do we have any other in, in the room before we wrap up? Sorry. Yeah, okay. So what I run into sometimes uh, Mm -hmm. that, so update PR and, and UPR are smart when you have the robot enabled. If you do EB dash dash robot dash dash new PR, it's going to take your easy config file, look what the dependencies are, mm -hmm. which are needed for that, and check which ones are in develop already and check which ones are not. Okay. And the ones that are not, it's going to include that in the pull request. So, yeah, so, exactly, yeah. so you may have the robot enabled in your default easy build configuration. But that also affects what new PR and update PR do. Okay, but that's a bug, yeah. So if update PR is complaining about not finding an easy config file for the dependency, then yeah, yeah, in separate PRs, yeah. No, it shouldn't. And and if it does, that's a bug. So if update PR is complaining about not finding easy configs for dependencies, it, it shouldn't. Now, if you do upload test report, it, it's different. Unless you have the CUDA installed already. So when you want to upload the test report for QDNN, then the CUDA one has to be there. Maybe maybe it's there. Well, we can take a closer look if you have an, a specific example and see what's going on. I, I suspect it may be because you have robots enabled in your easy build configuration to stop worrying or thinking about it, but that has an effect on what new PR and update PR are doing. Yeah, and that can maybe be disabled. Yeah. There's a, there's a set, yeah. But will not, yeah, yeah. So there's a separate configuration. There's, there's the robot configuration option, which tells easy build where to find easy configs and it enables dependency resolution. So there's two things. There's a robot paths option, which only tells it where to find stuff and it will not enable the dependency resolution. So you may be, you may be just have to switch to the other one and you should be fine. But we can, we can take a closer look at that. Yeah. There's a, a comment or a question. Yeah, so the yeah the CI test will fail um, if if the easy configs for your dependencies are not found, and that's actually a good thing because it's blocking the PR from being merged until the other stuff is being merged. Yeah, yeah so that that's very deliberate as well. That's definitely not a bug. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we went over time a little bit, but not too much. <laughs>